Hello folks, welcome to Bits Pilani, Pilani campus. Congratulations on making it to this dusty town in Rajasthan. It's quite a journey. You shall get to know once you make it here. Pilani can be reached via roadways lying right between Jaipur and Delhi. It doesn't have a railway station. The nearest railway station lies about 27 kilometers away in Loharu, Haryana. Though there is a bus stop right at the college gate, trains are the most efficient way to reach Pilani, especially if you come via Delhi. Let's enter the campus gate now. The trademark of the Pilani campus is its isolation from urbanization. The isolation has been adding to students' personal development for quite a few decades now. This can't really be explained on camera, it's more like an experience. Nevertheless, the security setup at the gate is quite robust and has done a decent job in keeping the campus environment both safe and healthy. Right at the campus gate is the Bits swimming pool. Though I never personally have visited the swimming pool, let me still take you inside. The teams which come down for the Bits open sports meet here are quite good and challenging to compete with. Let's keep walking. Interestingly, one of the first things that you encounter when you find your way inside is the placement unit. As the name suggests, this is where students get jobs. So yes, this shall be an important place for most of you guys wanting to be here. Here comes the VFAST hostel. This is the guest house on campus. It's got an old architecture and yeah, it's pretty beautiful. When you happen to get your guests on campus, this is where you shall get rooms for them at a discounted rate. Let me take you to an old hostel now. Every year, at least one hostel undergoes renovation. But regardless, you shall happen to see some of these old ones if you make it here in at least five years from now. These old rooms, in my opinion, provide natural isolation from the extreme weather conditions that Pilani experiences. Nevertheless, this is a subjective opinion and one should have awareness about one's tolerance limits. What you see right now is what is known as a hostel cutie. Students spend a lot of their afternoons and evenings here, playing numerous outdoor sports and bonding over long discussions on a variety of topics. Also, these turn out to be heavenly during winter afternoons for sunbathing, providing great relief from the intense Pilani winters. These are the old hostel washrooms. Those of you who are absolutely inclined towards using the western style, well, you might have to make a little adjustment here, for not all washrooms are of the western style. Nevertheless, one of the many lessons Pilani has in store for you. A glimpse of the Pilani mess here. The food, in my opinion, is very decent when compared to the notions you would have had with regards to mess food. Students play a role in deciding the menu and the rotation happens in such a way that the needs of the students from all over the country are met with. You also get good quality non-veg in the mess. It's paid though except for lunch on Sundays when it comes complimentary. Since we talked about the mess food, it's time for me to show you where to head to on days when you happen to miss one of your meals during the day. These little eateries are called radies. They are present outside of every hostel. Every ready boasts of its menu. Trust me, something as universal as a Maggie tastes a little different from one ready to another. Their menus are long ranging from Maggie's, to burgers, to sandwiches, to charts, to pohas, to chais, to cold coffees and what not. You'll always get to know this in detail if you happen to come here. Some of these are so old that the alumni who come over and are as old as 50 years do recognize the radies and the bhaiyas at the radies from their time. Radies add a very unique flavor of their own to the Pilani environment. Let's move around a little more in the campus. I shall take you to a renovated hostel now. We are now in Ram Bhavan, a renovated Bhavan, meaning it was just given a whole new look, but the broad structure remained the same as that of an old Bhavan. This is a renovated room. To be much more precise, this is my room. These posters, books, filming slash production equipment that you are looking at is a customized look I have given to my room. The hostel wardens are generous when it comes to this. You can give your room a look of your choice as long as you don't damage the institute property. Rooms are very special. They are a great reflection of who you are. But yes, if you're thinking that your room shall belong to you and nobody else, that's a rare feat to achieve in a hostel, especially boys' hostel. The collection of adjacent rooms in a corridor is called a wing. 
and the ones staying in these rooms are called wingies. Your wingie shall be present in your room for a much longer time than what you thought. You shall get a room with double occupancy in your first year. Second years get a single room subjected to availability. Some of them do and some don't. But from your third year onwards, everyone gets a single room. Hostel culture helps minimize college stress to a great extent. But yes, if you happen to get your relatives slash guardians to boys hostel, do keep the necessary precautions in mind. Well, all these experiences are waiting for you. You can give yourself a sigh of relief looking at the new Bhavan's washrooms. They're all constructed with western toilets. Moreover, all washrooms, whether new or old, are cleaned every day. Hygiene is something that is never taken for granted by the institute. This is a renovated Bhavan's cutie. Serves the same purpose as the old hostel cuties. People play badminton, volleyball, table tennis, cricket, football, and all other common sports. The hostels also have a snack vending machine that dispenses packaged food. By the way, do open a Paytm slash GPay account before you come to campus. It is pretty important. Hostel cuties differ in look from one hostel to another, but the groups using them and what all they do for some reason look the same. Let me take you to a beautiful location now. It's called Sky Ready. It's a bigger version of the Radies you just saw a while ago. This place has much more diverse menu. All club slash department treats and the fest photo sessions happen at this location. It's called Skylons. If you happen to graduate from Pilani, that is the location where you will stand for your batch discipline picture. Pilani also boasts of a beautiful museum inside the campus. It's called the Birla Science Center. It's the only technological museum in India which is privately sponsored. It has tourists from outside every day. Considering how far Pilani is from major locations, this is very surprising. But yes, Pilani overall has had a rich academic history. It hosts some of the best schools in India. The museum also has a Pilani gallery which shows how Pilani and this institute came up. It also has the Aditya Birla gallery which has a collection of some of Aditya Birla's most unique belongings which include an old aircraft belonging to the Birlas and some of their vintage cars. This is the most scenic location inside the campus, the new academic building. I promise to take you on a walk through this wonderful location. For now, let's visit a few other things. This is the Gandhi statue. The campus has many other statues of famous Indian personalities. They not just have symbolic importance, but also act as landmarks for students to find each other on a campus as big as this one. Inside the campus is one of India's good CBSE schools, the Birla Balika Vidya Peed. It is an all-girls school. But that does no justice to the gender ratio imbalance just like any other top engineering college in India. We shall head to the girls' hostel via the Miramar. Given the institute's strict guidelines about the prohibition on boys entering the girls' hostel and vice versa, we shall abide by that and only go as far as my camera can. The girls' hostel is called Meera Bhavan. Though I can't show you the footage inside, you can roughly estimate it to be similar to the old boys' hostels because Meera has lesser number of renovated blocks. Girls definitely need a cycle considering how far Meera is from the academic blocks. As of 2020, both boys and girls have no hostel in times. This means they can stay out of the hostel for as long as they want until they are safe inside the campus. It's the campus gate which has an end time of 8pm for safety reasons though. And of course, by now you must have estimated that most of the Pilani which you would find worth experiencing lies inside the campus gate and not outside. This is the statue of Sri G. D. Birla, the pioneering Indian businessman who was the founder chairman when the institute was established in 1964. The campus has a beautiful Saraswati temple which was built by G.D. Birla. It is an extremely peaceful and beautiful place to visit and offer prayers. These are some of the aerial shots of the new academic building and the Saraswati temple. The medical center takes care of the medical needs of the students as well as the other residents of the campus. Students can make full use of this facility as there are no consultation charges with the doctors. They however must pay for the medicines. This is the cricket ground which is located right next to the medical center. Well, having been a cricketer myself, I can say that the ground is not one of the biggest that you'll see, but just of the right size for you to have an intense match. 
Let me take you to the upstairs supermarket. This is one place where students and other Bits residents shop stuff for their day-to-day -day usage. Bits has the ID card facility with the help of which students can go cashless and purchase items on their ID cards and can later clear their dues as their fee demands for the next semester. This facility is present at almost all locations inside the campus except the Radies though. We've now reached Connaught, one of the corners of the campus. This place consists of a lot of restaurants and other shops for day-to-day -day requirements. The ID card facility isn't valid here. All transactions happen either in cash or via Paytm slash Google Pay. One of the reasons why I asked you to make a Paytm slash GPay account. Students come here for department dinners, interactions, farewells and other such events. This place also has a tailor, dry cleaning and other medical shops. This is a view of the Shiv Ganga Gardens from outside. Let me now take you on a walk through the most scenic view of the campus. This is called the New Academic Building. This is a visual portrayal of how BITS is a blend of old as well as new architecture. It is abbreviated as NAB. NAB hosts state-of-the-art classrooms and a newly constructed auditorium which is smaller than the main one. It hosts various departments like the CS department, the management department, the humanities department, etc. NAB also hosts the IPC or the Information Processing Center where you have a large number of computers installed for academic purposes running on high-speed internet connections. Students spend a large part of their academic life attending classes and giving tests here. You must have heard about the zero percent attendance policy in BITS, right? Well, to make it more clear, the policy only says that you are not required to maintain a minimum attendance percentage in order to appear for your semester exams. You are still likely to encounter tests in your classes and to miss them or not is a, is a choice that you make. So yes, with the number of interdisciplinary courses that BITS offers alongside the liberty to make your own timetable and choose your teachers easily makes it one of the most student-friendly academic systems in the country. As we talk, we head to the clock tower, the symbol of the Pilani campus. This tower has a rich legacy of its own. I suggest you discover some of it by yourself. This one is a typical classroom of the new academic building. Let's now enter the central auditorium or the world-class auditorium with Spilani. Well, yes, this is what it was named at the time of its establishment. It was inaugurated by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the first president of India. I still remember how amazing walking towards the auditorium for the first time felt like. You shall get your orientation done with your parents right here in the central auditorium. In bits, we call it Audi. It becomes the central spot for events during our grand cultural fest, namely Oasis. You shall happen to visit Audi for a lot of cultural events during your Bitsian life. This is how the auditorium looks from inside. Though it's not one of the bigger ones by today's standards, it definitely has got a very rich heritage associated with itself considering the kind of gigantic personalities who have come out from here and have graced this place. When the Audi lights turn on for an event, it looks like this. Music, dance, drama, and there is scope for every other form of cultural art. I strongly suggest you learn something before you come to college. Well, being a member of the music club, it's pretty convenient for me to show you how the music club looks like. Pay attention to the walls. These are known as grapes, which basically are the customized symbols of the students who have been a member of the club. Music club has very high quality, expensive equipment funded by the student union and the alumni to produce professional sounding music. And the kind of culture this club has to understand not just music but sound in general is absolutely amazing. If you have heard the band Agam, they were once members of this club. So yeah, I am waiting to see some of you guys at the auditions. We just zipped through one of the FDs 
or the faculty divisions. I'll take you on a tour inside. For now, we are at the FD2 QT. These have been well maintained inside the blocks. They become a center for street drama events during Oasis. Do have a view of the clock tower from here. So yeah, let's keep moving inside the faculty divisions. These are where almost all classes and labs were held when the new academic building wasn't constructed. There are three such FDs. Even today, these host almost all the old core labs and departments. Some of the departments that the FDs house are the electrical department, the mechanical department, the physics department, the chemistry department, the pharmacy department, the chemical engineering department and the civil engineering department. Looking at them, you can clearly understand how BITS is a blend of new and old architecture. Being from electronics engineering, I wish to show you one of the most unique labs from outside. This is called the Oyster Lab. It was the country's first campus-based design facility of its kind. Even today, there are hardly colleges which have a VLSIC design lab of this kind. The BITS alumni played a major role in establishing this. Tells you how important it is to have great alumni. We are now looking at the lecture theatre complex from outside. This is where lectures of almost all first year courses are held. Since all first years study the same courses together regardless of their branches, there are bigger rooms required to accommodate all of them. After the first year, a lot of branches have their lectures in the new academic building. This place is abbreviated as LTC and it's very close to the library that you can see. So this is how the classrooms inside the LTC look like. You must have seen college classrooms of this size in some of the movies, haven't you? Next we move into the library. I couldn't shoot a lot of locations inside the library, but trust me, it's extremely beautiful and even more rich in terms of the academic resources it has. I suggest you google for some of the pictures. It's impossible to explain how powerful the library is in such a short span, so I leave that as a surprise for you when you come. This is the first year's boys hostel SR Bhavan. More than 400 first year boys are accommodated here while the rest of them share hostels with the seniors. I was lucky to get this hostel, it has a culture of its own. This is SR Grounds. It looks like this when it lights up for the concerts during the fest. On usual days, SR Grounds are used for outdoor sports by those who wish to play in a larger space than the hostel cuties. We are now walking outside one of the renovated hostels just to see how they look from outside. This is Krishna Bhavan, one of the recently renovated hostels. We are now at the Gym G or the Gymkhana grounds. You're looking at basketball and tennis courts. These by no means are as old as this ground. Bits and Bossom, the sports fest, hosts a lot of teams from the Delhi University circuit and other colleges from India, which makes it a very, very competitive sports meet. The first edition of Boston was held in 1986. This is Jimji, the central location for all outdoor sports facilities. Bitsins live a very different life in Bits when compared to what they did before they joined. The institute encourages sports and fitness facilities. Jimji is the biggest of all grounds present in Bits. Athletics and football are held right here. Apart from this, there is a separate hockey ground which is present at the far leftmost corner. In front of the hockey ground is the volleyball court. As expected, just the way Audi becomes the central location during Oasis, Jimji becomes the central location during Bossom. All these fests are completely student run and managed by students themselves. Seniors interact with juniors and recruit them for their departments which run the fests. All of these indeed are wonderful and fruitful experiences. To understand a little of where it all happens, we shall now move to the Student Activity Center or what Bitsins commonly call it, SAC. The first organizing departments slash clubs have their rooms located in SAC. This place is all packed and lively during the fest preparations. Even on normal days, Students come here for cultural and indoor sports activities. 
Let's take a walk in this building and see what all it has. This is referred to as the SAC QT, typically used by the Department of Photography for their clicking practices. This is one of my favorite locations inside SAC. It's called SAC Amphi. Sometimes this place hosts small cultural events, but what majorly happens here are the post-fest meets in which students from all clubs and departments gather to discuss how the fest was and how it can be improved in the coming years. There are clubs for classical music, dance, mumming, debating, quizzing, drama, Wall Street, photography, filmmaking, arts, literature, etc. Some of the departments which work for the fest are the Department of Sponsorship, the Department of Controls, the Department of Art, Design and Publicity, the Department of Reception and Accommodation, the Department of Visual Media, the Department of Publicity and Correspondence, the Lights Department, the Sounds Department, the Department of Backstage, and I can keep going on. There are many more. Try guessing what each of them individually does for organizing a fest. As we keep moving, I'm just showing you the rooms from outside. You can guess what could be present inside. As you can clearly see, SAC is the center for all indoor sports activities. All of this together sums up the recreational activities which are extremely essential in a student's life. On a lighter note, there are regional SOCs too, joining which you can stay as a group with the people from your state. Don't miss out on getting to know the rest of the country's culture too. Something which can very conveniently be experienced in bits. This big hall that you see is called the SAC Hall. It is used for a variety of purposes like dance practices, structure paintings, drama inductions, etc. Bits also has several technical clubs. Though it's not this building that houses them, I might as well mention them here because we've been talking about the cultural ones. There are clubs for coding, designing, robotics, astronomy, radio control, automotive engineering, etc. Apart from these, there are subject-wise associations and societies. We have almost completed our SAC tour, and after looking at the indoor sports rooms from outside, we shall end at the gym or the health club. We wouldn't see it from inside, but nevertheless, I've been gymming for a few months to confidently state the fact that the gym has all the necessary equipment and machines required for a typical workout. And of course, the gym fees are as low as rupees 75 a semester, and even that is cut from your mess account. Let's talk a little fashion. One of my favorites. Yes, there is a Javed Habib salon on campus. It offers services at a discounted rate and students have the liberty to go cashless and avail them on their ID cards. The ladies have already given you the idea that Bits isn't short of eateries. But wait, that is not all. Apart from them and the restaurants at Connaught, there are other eateries which include the All Night Canteen, Looters, Talk of the Town and Mr. Idli outlets. There are also bakeries, ice cream parlors, and a mule dairy which offer delicious desserts. These are open for as long as 2 a.m. in the night. Together, they make sure that Bits never runs out of food. The only thing that I have missed on campus is the shawarma. But hey, that's because I live in Hyderabad. Let me now take you to a view that no Bitsian ever gets bored of. It's an architectural marvel. I would like to end this campus tour stating that no matter what you drop to come to Bits, the years that you spend here shall be some of the best ones in your life. You not just make the best of your memories, but the atmosphere of freedom in Bits helps you get inclined to what you truly are and what you actually are meant to do in life. All the very best. Enjoy the view.